Hello everyone and welcome back to another video. Now today is going to be a little bit different because today we are going to geek out a little bit on the AC charging algorithm and I will explain to you how it works, how the different phases are uh, from the algorithm and how the device communicates with your car. So let's dive into it. Now the first thing you need to know of course is AC charging, we're talking about that. So what is the difference between AC charging and DC charging? Now AC stands for alternating current. That means that you have a sine wave that uh, in Europe flows every 50th of a second. So in Europe it's 50 Hertz. Uh, I believe in the US you guys work on 60 Hertz. That means that the full cycle goes 60 times up and down every second uh, and that makes it alternating current and an example for that is just the grid if you use the grid your household appliances will work on alternating current dc current we know the best from batteries where you have a constant voltage that is going uh, at 12 volts one and a half volts uh, 24 volts it doesn't really matter it's just a constant voltage that we have and that makes it direct current so now that we know the difference between the two let's dive into what the device actually does so we are talking about a home charger that might or might not be a smart charger but in any case the home charger will communicate with the vehicle and this is a one-way communication so um, when we're talking about the pwm the pulse width modulation which is what is being used by these AC chargers. That is only communicating to the vehicle and uh, there is no communication from the vehicle to the charger. Now if you look at the charging plugs and you have the J1772 versus the Type 2 charger, which is common in Europe and the J1772 is common in the US, then you see that there are different pins and uh, a few of those pins are, for example, on the left, you have here L1, which is the line one, the neuter, and uh, of course the ground wire. But next to that, you have the PP, which is the proximity pilot, which is the signal that, or the wire that carries a signal um, to latch or unlatch the charge cable. So that is being used for that. The CP is the control pilot and that is being used to control the charge and to communicate with the vehicle what state the charger is in, whether the vehicle can start charging and how much it can charge. On the right you see the uh, three phase type 2 plug here where you have L1, L2 and L3 with the neuter as the fourth wire and then of course you have the ground wire or the earth wire with the same PP, CP, so proximity pilot, control pilot, uh, both in the cable and in the charge port as well. Now the charger itself can have about six different states. They are labeled A to F. And when we start with state A, that means that the device is ready to charge. So it is powered on and the device can provide a charge. Then we plug in the cable and the device detects that it is connected to a car and that it switches it to state B. We'll go into a little bit more detail on each of these states uh, in just a minute. Now when the car is charging then it will be either state C or state D. D is when it requires ventilation of the charging area. Uh, state C means it doesn't require that ventilation. And then of course we have states E and F which indicate errors. State E is with an error that is external and the F is basically a fault in the device itself. Now let's dive a little bit deeper into what that all means, of course. Now if we go to uh, state A, that means that the device will have a constant 12 volts and uh, it indicates that the car is not connected. So when we move to uh, state B, that is when we plug in the car, then an additional resistor of 2.74 kilo ohms is switched in 
And that is basically letting the car know or letting the device know that a car is connected. And because of this, the voltage is going to drop to 9 volts. So the state of the car or the state of the device is being regulated by the height of the voltage. Now when the car is starting to charge, it will switch in either a 1.3 kilo ohm resistor, which makes it drop to 1.6 volts, or a 270 ohm resistor, which makes the voltage on the CP drop to 3 volts. And that is again the difference between state C and state D. But at this point, the car is charging and the charge level is determined uh, by the car in the first place, but the car can never ask for more than what the charger is allowing to do so. So how does the charger allow it to, or tell it how much it can actually charge? Well, that is the pulse width modulation. So the width of that pulse, I'll have a drawing on that in a few minutes here, but the width of that pulse is determining how fast the car can actually charge. So if my charger says you can only get 10 amps, for example, and the car is demanding 24, it will automatically detect because of that pulse width, like, okay, I cannot charge above 10 amps. So this is the maximum that I'm going to do. And you'll see that in your car as well. If you plug it in into a charger that is being restricted to lower amperages, the car will actually detect that and will display that on your screen that it will only be able to charge, let's say, 6 amps, 10 amps, 16 amps, whatever the limit is for that charger. Now, if you go to the uh, state E, of course, then um, the CP, so that's the uh, control pilot, that will drop to 0 volts. And that means there's an error in the external uh, or external to the EVSE, so that's the EV supply equipment, the charger basically, but in technical terms, it is called an EVSE. And uh, that means, for example, there is no grid power or the uh, control pilot is uh, shorted to ground, something like that. So something external is uh, wrong. Where with the F, that means that something inside of the device is faulty. Uh, is broken, for example, and that generates a different error. And then we get a minus 12 volt signal to distinguish between that and everything else. Now the control pilot is being used to either determine or to both determine the state of the charger and communicate that to the vehicle, but also to communicate how much the car can charge. So the car can ask as much as it wants, it's the charger that determines how much the car will be able to request and to get uh, in the end. Now, uh, this is done by the pulse width modulation, so the PWM. Um, and this is a signal that has a frequency of 1000 hertz, more or less. There's a little bit of a margin on there, but uh, it's 1000 hertz. So 1000 times a second, you will have a binary signal going up and down. The pulse will always be the same width, but the positive side will vary depending on how much amperage the uh, charger is allowing the car to take. And the voltage on the positive side is what determines the state as I've just explained. Now, um, to measure this, we need to measure the signal 2000 times a second. So 1000 hertz means 1000 full cycles, but we need both top and bottom, of course. And that means that we need to do it at at least 2000 hertz to measure what is going on in the charger. Now that means that the charger is determining how much the car can get, uh, how much amperage the car can get. And that means that if you have a smart charger with an API, for example, or with some measuring device attached to it, you can have a solar mode, for example, where you only charge on the excess solar power that you have. So instead of injecting it to the grid, you're injecting it to the battery, um, but you're not getting the full power to charge a battery. You're not going to charge a car at 24 amps, but if the sun is shining brightly, you can do it at let's say 16 amps or maybe 10 amps. And if the sun is not shining at all, you drop to the minimum 
of 6 amps. That's the way that we do it with our charges at Powerdale, where uh, we drop to a minimum of 6 amps because most cars cannot charge below 6 amps. Even some cars can, can't go below 10 amps. Uh, but as soon as we get some excess energy above that 6 amps, uh, because of solar power generation, then we will increase it depending on the measurements that we have. And that is being done like every second where we can uh, vary the power that the car is having from 6 to 7 to 8 to 9 to 10. Then a cloud is coming, it's going to drop back down to 6 again, and then the sun starts shining again, and maybe it goes to 12 or to 13 amps, uh, something like that. So that is how the solar mode on smart charges actually works. So you measure your excess energy, and then you change the control pilot signal that is being sent to the car to tell the car, okay, now you can charge more or now you can charge less. Um, also, when we are talking about, for example, in Luxembourg, you have a mandatory, uh, an external cable and there the government or can actually send a pulse or the energy supplier um, can send a pulse on your network. And if that pulse is activated, then you must drop to 6 amps. It is to balance the grid a little bit and they do that externally instead of what we are doing mostly is just balancing our own system and trying to consume as much as possible directly from the solar power. Here they can say okay even if you don't have solar power now you're limited to 6 amps and that is done externally and it is mandatory by law in uh, Luxembourg for example perhaps in other countries as well, but there external parties can determine how fast you can charge your car. Now I mentioned the pulse width being uh, the determining factor of how much a charge can, or how much a car can actually charge. So the width is always 1,000th of a second for the complete pulse, but it's the positive side that determines how much it can actually go. And there's a formula for that uh, to make it easy. So from 10% to 85%, you have to do the duty cycle. So if the duty cycle is 10% times 0.6. So at 10% positive charge. So if 10% of the pulse is positive, then um, it will charge at 6 amps. If we go to 16%, it will be 10 amps, 26%, 16 amps, 40%, 24 amps. So that's the uh, also the three phase charging of course uh, 24 amps that I that my car can do so um, if this is what I'm limiting the charger to then uh, this is the signal that I'll be sending which will be 40% positive signal or the duty cycle of 40% with 53% that's the 32 amps for those lucky ones that still have the uh, dual charger on their Model S's now above 85%, it's a little bit different. You have to deduct uh, 64 from the duty cycle and then do it times two and a half to get to the amperage. So 90% is 65 amps um, for single phase uh, charging. Like for example, in the US, you will have that with the higher amperages or 80 amps will be 97% duty cycle. Above and below are more for status messages as well. So between um, roughly 8%, um, so it's 8 to 10% is lower limit, and 97%, that is where the charging information is being transmitted. Outside of those boundaries, it is again communication, getting the signal ready or acknowledged by the car um, as well, for example. Now, if you look at this uh, charge plot to bind it all together here, then we see that it starts with a signal of plus 12 volts, which means that we are in state A. The device is ready to charge a car. Then it drops to 9 volts, which means that we switch to state B, and that means that we plugged in the cable. And at that point, the signal is already starting to alternate. Now when we move to state C or D, it either drops to 6 volts or 3 volts, but you see that the bottom still remains at minus 12 volts so it's only the positive side that is being used 
for the signal, basically. So at the beginning, we have about 50% um, duty cycles. So that means that we are at uh, 30, 30 amps, something like that, uh, charging there. And then suddenly you see that the positive duty cycle is getting a lot less, maybe like 20%. So that means that it will drop to roughly, let's say, 13 amps or 16 amps uh, in this case. And that will continue to charge like that. So that could be that external pulse that is being uh, sent by the energy company, or uh, it could be a setting on the device or via the API or via solar mode that it is being limited. Um, so it is an external factor that changes how much the device will allow the car to charge. And then we reach the end of the charge, and then that means that the car is no longer charging. So the length of the charge, the duration, and when it needs to stop, that is determined by the onboard charger of the car. Um, it, the device just says, well, I'm still allowing this, right? So the car stops charging. That means we go back to state B. Um, so the voltage increases again to plus nine volts. And then it is uh, getting a request to disconnect via the uh, proximity pilot, for example. The cable is unlatched. You pull the cable and then we go back to plus 12 volts. And uh, the device is unplugged uh, from the car. It is still powered on and ready to do another charge. So that is how the PWM uh, protocol works on an AC charger. So your home charger, your public AC charger up to 22 kilowatts. That is what is uh, going on behind the scenes. And I hope you found this interesting. I really found it interesting myself to see how this all works. And I know a couple of you guys that are following are also geeks on that level. So I wanted to share this information with you. I hope you liked it. And as usual, if you did, give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to the channel and make sure you click that little bell icon so you don't miss out on any new videos. And for now, thanks for watching. See you guys in the next one. Bye-bye.